I got to find out who Joseph William Hahn was. I had 52 solid weeks to find out who I was. Maybe for the first time in 30 years. Then I was introduced to this program, a 12-step program called Celebrate Recovery. And I was able to go through the 12 steps and I was able to look at the opportunities to forgive and, and, and do a personal inventory and work through that and say, hey, you know, I, I, I can lay this stuff down and not carry it around with me anymore. But the really awesome part about everything was, is these two books. These two books. You guys familiar with this one? Yeah. How about this one over here? Yeah. Yeah. Those are good books, aren't they? Now, I'm not going to get too much into the, to the, the spiritual thing, but I've got to share this with you because it's really an important part of, my part, uh, part of my story. Because I read this book here. Are you guys familiar with page 417 of the fourth edition? Fourth edition they say that acceptance is the key to all my problems today until I can accept life completely on life's terms. I will not be able to stay sober. It's not what needs to be changed in the world, but what needs to be changed in me. You, you guys familiar with that? Here's the sentence that got me. Absolutely nothing in God's world happens by mistake. I was like, oh. That kind of questioned my whole theology, didn't it? And then this guy, Rick Warren, writes this book and said, God created your parents to get together to create you just the way he wanted you created to fulfill a purpose, just the way he wanted it fulfilled. And to much to my surprise, there was nothing in there that said the way Joe wanted things. So I ran to my counselor as fast as they would let me run in the Missouri Department of Corrections, and I said, Miss Reeves, Miss Reeves, guess what? She goes, what, Joe? I go, I can't question God. You know what she said? Are you ready? Duh. <laughs> you know what? That moment I needed. I needed that moment like, yeah, duh, stupid. I'm talking about myself. But I needed that duh moment in my life. I said, hey, I'm not in control as much as I think I'm in control. And if I can submit and ask for help from individuals that have a better lifestyle to me. Maybe I can get some good advice. Maybe if I can submit to a higher power, maybe I can get better results in my effort. So September 29th of 2010, I'm getting ready to, uh, 2009, I'm getting ready to leave uh, the Missouri Department of Corrections tonight. And, and what we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes, the last half of the, the presentation is going to be about getting to yes. And this getting to yes is about 180 day challenge that I, that I compose for myself. Uh, the scripture that I use, and this is the only scripture I'm going to say, uh, is based off uh, Malachi 3.10. It says, bring your whole time to my storehouse to, so that my storehouse may have food. Test me out now on this, says the Lord of hosts, for if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing until it overflows. Okay? I'm not going to start preaching at you. But I read that and I said, I didn't know if God was real. I didn't know if he cared. I didn't know if I really could have a relationship with him. And one of the counselors there encouraged me with the scripture. If I brought everything to a council of individuals, asked for spiritual guidance and tested him, he would show up in my life so abundantly I wouldn't know what to do with everything. Would, it, would anybody in here like to have a, a life messy, full of blessings? Pick me twice. I want a blessed life. I would love to have a blessed life. And I believe God has blessed me up the line. So... Three or four things in 180 days, if, if he shows up in my life, I sell out for helping people and sharing this story for every individual. It took God with my help, or my, me with God's help, however you want to look at it, 109 days. I wanted to go back to school. I had $18,000 in debt with the United States Department of Education. I wanted to become a, a, a published author, and I don't. I went to my car, and I don't have any books with me, and I apologize. I wanted to plan an outreach event, and I wanted to become a public or motivational speaker took 109 days. You know the $18,000? I thought this was the coolest thing. It was rolled over into a new loan with a lower interest rate than I had before. I finished my undergraduate degree December last year. I'm currently enrolled in the graduate program at Missouri State University. Um, I wrote a book called Rage to Redemption. You can find it on Amazon.com. And, and, and one of the sentences that I wrote in there says, we've all fallen short of the glory of God, as we know. It's not as we fall as long as we get back in the show. Right? So, I, I wrote the book, and, and then we planned an outreach event last year. We had 400 people show up. We've got another one planned this year. And I shared this testimony, this recovery story, over 300 times in 10 different states in just a short three years. Now, I thought, it, it, if you just showed up in these few things, that would be great. But... Many other things have happened. Uh, I've become executive director of a ministry called Archangel Outreach Ministries. Appeared on TV shows. Um, that's seven. I've, I've 
trying to load a new one, but it's actually 10 different states. I've got to meet uh, individuals like Daryl Strawberry Mercy Me, share stories with them, uh, and, and it's been pretty awesome. One of the awesome um, opportunities I've had is through the Missouri Recovery <coughs> Network as well. Um, I was voted in as a Southwest Missouri State Council member back in 2010, and today I'm employed by them. I always joke around that I was once an enemy of the state, and now through the Missouri Recovery Network, I'm a representative of it. So, you know, they don't even ask me any questions when I go in the Capitol. You think they would have, like, buzzers and whistles going off. No, don't let him in here. He's a crazy man. But, no, it's, it's been a really awesome opportunity. Um, you know, this is, this is a House member over here that, you know, I had an opportunity to talk with. Um, but the one thing that I really have to share is he's, he's blessed me in my personal life. Um, my father died in 2010. I was released in 2009. And one of the wonderful things was is my father grabbed my hand on Christmas of 2009. And he says, I got my baby boy back. It was an awesome opportunity to see the restoration with my father. I'm now married. I have a beautiful five-year-old. Uh, a lot of you got to see the five-month-old, um, and, and it's been a true blessing. Now, the sheets that you have in front of you, uh, this is the getting to yes. Are you guys encouraged to know how all this happened? 180 days, just come up with three or four things, and everything will be great. You want me to explain that to you a little bit better? Would well, that help you? Um, I added some slides to my flash drive, I'm sorry, but I've, I've got these sheets for you. Now, coming up with three or four things, I would encourage you to come up with three or four things that you want to accomplish. And, and some people tell me, it's like, well, I just, I, I, I just, I just want, to, I, I want to do better. Do better at what? I would encourage you to be very specific on these four things. But here's the key. I'm going to start with this. What, what would be the philosophy of getting to yes? Are you guys ready? It's really simple. You ready? Don't accept no for an answer. How many times do we accept no? Say, no, you can't do that. No, you can't have this job. No, you can't complete or accomplish those things in your life. How many times do we say, yeah, they're right. Yeah, I probably can't. How many, how many people are guilty? I'm guilty. We accept no way too often. Do we accept no as the final answer? Or, or do we go back and we go back to the drawing board and say, I want to find an opportunity or a way to get to yes. Do we do that? Those in here that raised your hand earlier with, with the struggle with this uh, chemical dependency or substance abuse issue, did you accept no when you couldn't find your next drug or drink? Wow, now there's a thought in there. When you wanted something bad in your life, you found the determination to get it. So that, I'm not saying that you won't hear no. Uh, that, that's an unrealistic thing. But the thing is, is that you don't have to accept it, right? Now, if I go to this gentleman and say, hey, can I, can I work for you? Go ahead, shake my hand. Can I work for you? Tell me no. Tell me no. Oh, no. Okay, well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs> Tell me no again. Can, can I work at your place? No, sorry. Okay, uh, thank you for your time. And I go around and I get eight no's. Don't have to accept them. I thank them for their time. And then I come, you're going to tell me yes. I say, uh, you know, yeah. sir, I, I've really... Put it to time and I really would like a job. And if there's an opportunity, I'll even clean a toilet. Is, could I work for you? But if I would have stopped at eight, how would I ever know what number nine is going to say? Law of, law of averages says one out of every ten will be a yes. We cut ourselves too short. Maybe because we have a chemical dependency or, or maybe we have a developmental disability or, or we struggle with, with a, uh, a, a mental issue. We cut ourselves short. And we don't allow ourselves the opportunity to get to yes. We too easily accept no. We live in a society that says, eh, accepting no is okay. Don't we? We're held down so many times. But coming up with three or four things that you want to complete that, are, that push the level a little bit. You know, the four things that I came up with, I wanted to say, you know, if that came true, there was some help that was, was given in those because there were some things that I didn't think I could complete, especially in the time frame of 180 days. But you can't accept no for an answer. Now, on this sheet right here, I, I've given you the scripture. It says in here, throughout the quest of happiness and success in our lives, many times we hear no more often than we will get a yes. When looking to make advancements, especially our goals, are set higher than what would the world expects to expects us to go. Stay motivated. Stay positive. You have the ability to be as successful and as happy as you want to be. 
And one of the things that I would always encourage is some people will ask me, why do you have three or four things? Why don't you just concentrate on one? Well, there's a very uh, important aspect of that. If you come up with three or four things, you know, when I was trying to get into school, I heard a lot of no's. I heard a lot of no's. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Hahn, but we, we, you can't get back into school. You got too much money in debt. Um, the timetable's too short. So I had three other things that I could go to when that got frustrating and I got really upset and I, and I just didn't feel like I could make another phone call to the, the, the education um, people at the state, I would go work on something else. I'd work on you know my book or I would work on you know planning an outreach event or I would work on trying to speak and share the story somewhere else. And one of the other aspects that I really uh, think is an integral part of, of doing the Getty TS is service work. How many times do we get involved in our community helping other people? It helps fill us up. It's an important aspect. Uh, it's a very important aspect as far as getting to yes because we can get there and we can step aside I mean uh, one of the things and when you're working through a process like this you can burn yourself out very easily if you stay focused on one task all the time Does that makes sense you know if I'm just like I want to go and I want to go to school and I want to go to school and I want to go to school and then I keep hearing these no's the thing is is those no's are going to start becoming a reality I'm going to start accepting them so we want to set ourselves up for success that we don't Except no. Does that make sense to you guys? 